Dolph Lundgren here on the Rich Eisen Show. Our radio audience has just returned. We just showed a clip of Wanted Man, which is available in theaters on demand and digital this Friday, January 19th. You are in the film. We just saw that in the in the uh, in the the clip. We didn't see Kelsey Grammer in the clip, but he's in the film too, huh? Kelsey, yeah, yeah, he's a friend of mine. And how long have you known him? I've known him since Expendables three, so that's probably six, seven years. Yeah, okay. Well, when we met, actually before that, yeah. Uh huh. And then I knew him socially, and uh, somebody suggested him for the role. A mutual friend, who, and. Uh, you know, his his delivery is very. No matter who he plays, is light and and entertaining. And I right. he plays an interesting kind of a character that has a lot of levels. So I thought it'd be a good choice to do that, and mm-hmm. I think it works pretty well. Well, I mean, he's Kelsey Grammer, man. Yeah, he was. I uh, mean, so that so you only met him recently. In compare, no, I, I thought I'm, maybe uh, you might have crossed paths late, you know, earlier in your career. Expendables three, and then uh, socially I met him, and then we worked on this together, and. Uh, no, he's a great guy. I mean, first of all, I, I I like him as a person, but you know, his acting is really terrific. I mm-hmm. mean, he's 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 great in this part because he plays a few different levels at the same time. Right, and you directed this as well. Yeah, so, I did. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, what what different mm-hmm. challenges does that give you, Dolph? The well, you know, acting and directing is is a challenge because you're you're uh, you have to be prepared. So you don't have to worry about your own performance that much, but you can focus on the other actors, yes. on the cinematography, on the lighting, and other things, you know, uh, that you need to do as a director. So it's uh, it's a challenge, but I I like it. It's it's satisfying, you know, to do it. Uh, I've done a lot of acting, so this is just a different different, more challenging way to do it. And again, it's available in theaters on demand and digital this very Friday, January nineteenth. You also have another. Um, project a new series that's coming out tonight yes at 9 30 p.m eastern time on the maximum effort channel it's 12 episodes and it's called flip a coin <laughs> and it's narrated by your fellow swede malin ackerman correct yes and is it is it true it's just you flipping a coin is that literally what this is yeah Golf? it's uh it's very exciting i flip a coin for 30 minutes and uh, <laughs> what is it a quarter? What, what sort of coin? What, what it's you... a special Swedish coin. That okay. Was, uh, yeah, it's got a Viking on one side. Um, yeah, it's an interesting show. I, uh, to be honest, I don't quite understand it, but <laughs> but I thought you know maximum effort. They're very no, smart guys. And, no, you know, no, I mean, to, I, I get it. It's so, a you challenge. Know, it's Fubo and Ryan Reynolds. I get it. You go to so what are you just flipping a coin? Like, yeah, what's... flipping it. Different angles, slow mo from above, from below. Yeah, they're visually exciting, and I guess you can use it to to gamble on different things. Okay. And, uh, well, I mean that that is one of the most wild aspects for me that I've been fortunate to do with the NFL, going to as many Super Bowls as I've been to, is the loudest cheer sometimes at the Super Bowl is when they announce the coin flip, whether it's heads or tails, and it isn't because somebody's cheering whether their team is about to receive the football, Dolph. Like, there is an actual wager on heads or tails. There you go. There's... So have you determined that is is it – that this is an age-old question you might know better. Is is it truly a 50-50 proposition between heads or tails? Have you, have you determined anything about that? Well, you know, I did study chemical engineering for five years in yes. college. Yes. Uh, uh, I read that it's uh, it's not a 50-50 because the coin, the head side is slightly heavier because there's more there's more brass on that side, more metal. Okay. So that is more likely that the head goes ends up going fl- and down. So okay. in other words, tails is. Fifty-two percent, and and heads would be forty-eight. So, so there you go. So yeah. when they say tails never fails, Whoa. that's incorrect. Yeah. But tails is more often. It's more often, yeah. To win, yeah. Except on the Viking coin is a different. Oh, well, hold on a second, Noah. So, but so, in, in so a, wait a minute. So, Super so, Bowl, so, so the, you should go for tails if you're going to bet. I well, I mean, be. sometimes they, they don't they put what do they put it? Heads is is the is the logo the and the tail. Helmets sometimes is now, it sometimes yeah. or is it the Super Bowl logo on one side, the NFL logo? What what is an on actual coin? So it's it, you yeah. need to look at the design well, of the coin. Is what you're right saying now. that that is a mm-hmm. crucial aspect of, yeah. of that? 
Yeah, the, because if you flip it a thousand times, then yes. statistically, the heavier side would end up going down, hitting the ground first huh. more times. So if it isn't exactly balanced, then that does make a difference. <clears throat> How about that? Chris, are you, because that's the gambler here. What do you, what do you, was that a quarter you have right there? I'm examining in this quarter. However, the tails is different now. The tails on this one is like a Mount Rushmore situation. What do you think? If, if it's a four, a four headed uh, a sculpt, so, sculpture made, a, you know, out of, yeah, out of rock, uh, I mean, uh, that's is it about of, the same size as the heads? What do you think, a, Chris? I think it's 50 50 on this one, actually, to be okay. honest. 52 48 tails. I'm a heads guy. Well, it looks like that's why you're a loser. Yeah, thanks. Not <laughs> say, you know, I'm, you know 48% that. of the time. Appreciate that. You know, okay, very good. Uh, all right, Dolph Lundgren here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, again, that's Flip a Coin tonight. I'm fascinated. 9.30 p.m. Eastern on uh, Maximum Effort Channel. Uh, we've got uh, a game we like to play here called Celebrity True or False. So we ask you things from your career. You tell if it's true or not. Okay. I think you've kind of already revealed that. And we've got some great production value to start it off. Hit it, please. True or false? You can't handle the truth. That's our production value. <laughs> That's it. And you, as the producer of Wanted Man, you no doubt appreciate production value. Of course. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. Here we go, Dolph Lundgren. First one up. You kind of just alluded to it, so I guess this is true. Although I don't know if the aspect about it. it true or false? You left MIT after just two weeks. To pursue yeah. an acting career. That's correct, yes. You were, cam you were on campus at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for just two weeks. Yes, I had already been in New York for uh, six months. I was going out with a lady named Grace Jones in those days. I was had, uh, hanging out at 54 and with Warhol and the rest of them. And, <clears throat> and then I started studying acting and decided that test tubes wasn't they weren't that exciting anymore. I wanted to, you know. Going to show business. So you're like, screw this test tubes business. I'm, I'm hanging out with Andy. What is what is it like hanging out with Andy Warhol <laughs> at Studio 54, <laughs> Dolph Lundgren? It was uh, it was pretty kind of mind blowing for a young Swedish kid at the time. I was I think it was about 25 at the time. And, right. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a different era of no cell phones and you know, people had a different feeling of privacy, I think, in those pl places than now. So a lot of big celebrities were there. You know, if it was Mick Jagger or David Bowie, whoever, you could see a lot of people there in person, you know. So what do you have a conversation with Andy Warhol about? What is, um, what is that? Like, hey, well, where are you from, Andy? Or like, what? Did no, the first time I met him, I, I was actually roaming around this club. And, um, you know, I never drank or anything. I was just training in those days. And... Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some little guy comes up to me and goes, uh, what are you famous for? And I'm like, nothing as far as I know. And then he puts up a little, he has a little Instamatic camera, he takes a picture of me and says, I'm going to put you in my magazine. And it was Andy Warhol. Somebody <laughs> told me, yeah, wow. that's, that's him. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> no, wow. I'm serious. Just going to put you in my magazine. Yeah, and then I ended up in Interview Magazine, and that was around the time I was auditioning for Rocky IV, and... Uh, and I got to meet Sly and all of that. So it was a big, big change in my life. And in about a year or two, it changed, you know, 180 like that. Wow. Yeah. To hell with MIT. <laughs> you, know? you know, actually, I was, I was at LAX a number of years ago checking in. And uh, I was going through the security with an agent. I think somebody was helping me through. And yeah. this guy ahead of me went, uh, he says, um, are you Dolph Lundgren? I say, yeah. He says, well, I'm Professor So-and-so. I'm the one who approved your application to MIT. <laughs> and uh, he says, I guess you did okay without it. And I said, yeah, I'm sorry I quit. But <laughs> What did you think you wanted to be when you went to MIT? Well, I was going to get a PhD in chemical engineering. I had a master's. And I, mm -hmm. then I was going to go go to business school and uh, and try to run Exxon or something. You know? Jeez. Uh, uh, I mean, the rest of these questions after this, but hold on a minute. Here we go. Uh, true or false, you were the team leader for the U.S. modern pentathlon team at the 96 Summer Olympics. That's true, yeah. So how'd you get involved with that? I did a movie called Pentathlon, and uh, two of the guys who trained me were Olympic athletes uh -huh. on the U.S. team. And then pentathlon was a sport that they were going to eject from the games because every game, Olympic Games, they, they try on two new sports, and they get away, you know, eject to old sports, and mm -hmm. they were going to get rid of pentathlon, so they wanted me to help kind of uh, uh, 
help boost uh, the image of pentathlon. So I did this film about it. And then um, they wanted me to be team leader at 96 and 96. And, and I, I was team leader is like the guy who sets up the training, uh, who, who arranges the, the travel and kind of manager and, and uh, training schedule and stuff like that. And uh, it was, it was, it was interesting because, you know, Ali was the guy who lit the torch. and, and uh, yeah. Were you there that night? Yeah, I was there that night at, in the stadium. And Did um, you tell him you would break him? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he did throw a couple of jabs my way when I ran into him in the, in the elevator. Are you serious? Yeah. Was, he, tell well, me there's a photograph in, uh, of Muhammad Ali and uh, um, Ivan Drago. Is there a photograph of that somewhere? No, he was always... Uh, he was a he was a funny guy, you know. He yeah. he was a little bit. He had, had Alzheimer's at that time too. But yes. he he was he was still sharp. Like he still recognized me and realized I was from that movie. And so he started doing a little shadow boxing. Oh my yeah. god! Wow. So Warhol wasn't there to take that picture. Is what no, you're saying. no, he okay. wasn't there to defend, right. defend me. So then let's go back to the uh, back to the day. <laughs> then uh, third one for you. I got five of them. Dolph Lundgren, celebrity, true or false? It's true. I imagine then that you pulled a gun on Grace Jones in a View to Kill. Yes, I did. You did? On, on Chris Walken. Oh, you put on a gun her. on Chris Walken? Was her on Chris Walken. No, it was on uh, on her. You're right. Okay. On her, yeah. Yeah, he was in the background. What was it like doing a scene with Christopher Walken? He was, uh, it was interesting. You know, I just started acting yeah. uh, and I... You were a body. You were a Russian bodyguard. I was a Russian bodyguard. Somebody got yeah. sick, and I just stepped in and took Are you that serious? Role. Yeah. They, that... The director said, you want to be in the movie? And I'm like... I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. So, yeah, I just get over here, put the suit on, pull the gun, point it at Grace, or was it at Chris? No, it was at Grace, point uh -huh. it at Grace. But um, it was interesting because, you know, Chris Walken was doing a scene with this British actor who plays the Russian KGB guy. Yeah. Yes, he's always the same guy, you know, plays the <laughs> Russian <laughs> henchman. Anyway, so I watched them rehearse, and... Um, and then when the, on the on take one, you know, mm -hmm. Chris Walken goes, he does it ex completely differently. Like instead of being very soft, he yells, and the guy jumps back like a foot. He just jumps, and mm -hmm. and they got it on camera. And I realized, wow, it was really clever. He did that. He, you know, he switched set, it up. He switched it up on the guy. So I think that's the scene that's in the movie. We, um, and he, he was a great guy, you know, uh, interesting. So, you, so that's how you got your credit from A View to a Kill is that somebody got sick. You're like, you know, you, you look like a bodyguard. Get in there. And then you then, you, I mean, you got a you got on camera. You pulled a gun on Grace Jones. Yeah, I did. Who was your uh, girlfriend at the time, right? Uh, yes. But oh my um, gosh. All right. I was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, in the credits, you have to wait about three minutes when I appear at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, Roger so, Moore is first, yeah, I think. Yeah, Roger. Roger. Yeah. Did you meet him? Yes, he was. He always, yeah, he always he smoked cigars and he was he always sat back and goes, "Dolph is larger than Denmark." For some reason, I don't know where he got it from. But what a quote! <laughs> that's what he would say. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I always remember that. It was out of nowhere. Well, I don't. Th I think he's accurate. Wow. Uh, true funny. or false? You got your role in Rocky Four by sending photos and videos of yourself to someone who knew Sly Stallone. Uh, I I gave a eight by ten to this guy um, who was a friend of Sly, um, and um, they took me about six months to for them to. Um, for for uh, for him to get the pictures for Sly to somebody to contact me uh -huh. when I was back in Europe and uh, then they flew me into LA and I met him here uh, when he was doing Rambo two mm -hmm. so he had long hair he was tanned and wow. I was starstruck and, uh, and then you know I had to audition for the role for about six another six months or so and that's how you got the gig yeah. Yeah. What do you uh, think of when you see a photo of yourself as Drago back uh, in the day, man, right now? Um, well, it, it brings back memories of all the training with it, you know, um, that remember, this is back in the day when everything had to be in camera. There were no special effects. There were, I mean, no visual effects. Right. And there were no doubles because we're in the ring with no shirt on, both of us. So you had to be, you had to have the six pack and everything was real, you know, and, uh, there were no doubles or anything like that. And if you wanted blood to fly out of your mouth, you had to 
get punched and get it to fly out of your mouth. So I, I was always impressed Sly I was in such good shape because I was a European, you know, karate heavyweight champion. Well, you're and, bigger and, than Denmark. And I'm bigger than Denmark. And he, <laughs> but he's about the size of Italy, so he kept that in, <laughs> in those days. And Dolph, is it true you put Sly in the hospital? Uh, during the filming? He, well, he ended up in the hospital. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was me well, or if it was, I mean, what, hold was on a second. Was it, was it, did you connect with him? Is that what happened? Uh, well, we did connect a little bit, both of us, um, to the body mostly. And I think that's where he apparently got hurt. His heart had some kind of, went through some, <laughs> some shock or something from. Damn. Yeah, but he hit me a lot too. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, I only did what I was told to do. He was the boss, and I was, I was sick. He said, know, hit me? He said, he's like, hit yeah, me? Yeah, go ahead, hit me. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you regret uh, that. <laughs> yeah, we did that. And uh, also to the, you know, the head, those head shots, when your face goes in slow motion, those, you know, have to line those up mm -hmm. in those days with uh, 120 uh, frames a second, you know, uh, and just mm -hmm. stiff arm it with the wow. blood flying, and then take an aspirin and go home that day. Take an aspirin. <laughs> and the last one, is it, true you, is it true you had only nine speaking lines in that movie? No, I don't know. Nine speaking lines. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that, is that, is that what we found out? I think that's what we've seen. Nine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Half in English, half in Russian? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Maybe yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. Or four. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I think there was probably more in the original, and they cut the character down. Uh, a little bit to make him even more mysterious, you know, uh, which I, I think it works. Uh, it did, <laughs> <laughs> you know, on film, sometimes if you don't say anything, uh, I guess here's a better a, choice. Here's a bonus one. Is, is it also true, true or false that you you were you were you had your eye on the uh, the running man role that went to Arnold? Uh, I I In think I was. Yeah, I think somebody sent me the script. But Arnold, of course, was a bigger star and. In those days, and uh, and he wanted to do it, and he did a good job. So you know, and by the way, I met Arnold, yes, with Grace when he did Conan too, and I was a fighter at the time when mm -hmm. I first met him. Mm -hmm. So so we were friends back then, even. Yeah, he came here in studio in December. Oh, did he? Yeah, okay. And he uh, he he looked <laughs> at this chair that you're currently sitting in, uh -huh. called it a baby chair. A baby chair. Yeah, he's not going to sit in a baby For chair. For man. And, yes. he <laughs> and he literally he went to Chris's seat, and he took that and removed this chair and moved that over here and sat in that chair. What a character. And no, he's, he's a character. Yeah. He is that. Yeah. That's well, funny. It's good to have you here, Dolph Lundgren. Thanks, Rich. Wanted Man is available in theaters on demand and digital this very Friday, January 19th with you and Kelsey Grammer and more. And Flip a Coin yes, debuts sir. tonight. Watch Dolph flip a coin for 30 minutes. I can't believe we learned that Heads, heads. is uh, going to lose more than Tails just because of gravity um, and things <laughs> of that nature, things like science. That's at 9.30 Eastern on the Maximum Effort Channel. New episodes every Wednesday. Good to see you again. You too. Let's Thanks. do this more often than just every six years. Dolph Lundgren right here on The Rich Eisen Show. We're back to wrap Thank things you. up in a moment. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.